Welcome again. Um, we are here tonight to discuss um, high school planning, right? Many of you may be the first time high school parents, so welcome to MMO Atherton. Joining us this evening is um, Mr. Carl Liscote, our instructional vice principal, uh, Ming Su, one of our school counselors, Jason Kubo, another school counselor, and Heather Lowe, who is a counseling intern. And I neglected to start by introducing myself, so bear with me. Um, my name is Sylvia Torres, and I'm um, the head counselor here at, at uh, Menlo Atherton. Um, this is my first webinar, so I apologize if I make mistakes and I flunder, do some funny things on my screen. So we'll go ahead and get started. And go. Oh. All right, so again, welcome class of 2025. Um, for those of you who are my age, and I won't disclose my age, 2025 just seems so far away when I was a freshman in high school. But here you are with us today, um, preparing your eighth grader to start high school. Um, sorry. Uh, again, I introduce um, people that will be here tonight. Um, the three counselors will really be just answering questions in the Q&A. So that's your opportunity to ask questions. And then Mr. Luscote and I will be kind of um, reviewing the presentation and going over some um, information that's important for you to know. Um, something that, that we, you know, when we think about success, success is defined in many different ways, but we chose this um, quote by Maya Angelou, success is, like, is liking yourself, liking what you do and liking how you do it. As your children, again, join high school and become young adults, we want them to not only think about success, about their grades, but really about caring about who they are as a person, um, really enjoying the things that they choose to do and how they're doing it. And I think if they can do that in the next four years of high school, they will be successful um, MA students. Our agenda for today, lots to cover. We're gonna go over some big enrollment timeline like due dates and important deadlines, placement charts, right? I know many of you may be thinking, yeah, they took an English test or math test. What does that mean? And then what courses are required for all freshmen? And then what elective options they have? And then what the next steps are after um, this evening? So the first thing I wanna point out is our timeline. And the first thing here is the address verification. This is super important. If you have not already done this with our district office, I wanna encourage you to do that. Um, especially if you are attending a middle school that feeds into Menlo Atherton, some examples of that are Keelview, Lontrada, or Ravenswood Middle School. Um, often we have parents who use a PO box as their mailing address, and that information is then provided to Sequoia District. We will not enroll your student into our district if you've been using a PO box, or if you use different addresses, um, and that address does not fall into our attendance area. Again, your student will not be seen in our um, information student system. So again, I wanna encourage you to do that so that when, when it's time to select courses, which is coming up really soon, your student will be in our system. This evening, um, obviously March 11th, we're going over course selection and um, what that means and planning for your students freshman year of high school. Um, on Monday, the district will be sending out information about how you will um, log into our system called Infinite Campus and help and select courses for your student, or in some cases, just review what has already been selected for your student. And again, I will be going over what courses are required for all freshmen. Um, and then you will have from March 17th through the 31st to um, go into our system, Infinite Campus, and make your final um, request for students. And then in May, you will be able to go again back into our Infinite Campus system and review all anything, any of the requests that you made that you'll be able to see that. Yes, did my student get what I requested? Did they not get it? Um, and at that time, we'll also be asking you for some information such as emergency contact, um, information about your student's health, any allergies. So again, doing the online information update in May is super important and gives us more information about your student. Course placement in chart. So, Students um, are placed in English and math classes based on um, test scores that we have received from um, your feeder school, your, middle, your child's middle school. Um, 
So we'll start with English. English is based on their reading comprehension or their reading skills. And we call that a Lexile score. Uh, and I'm not gonna break it down for you. You'll be able to see this, but really it's really, an, it, what, what I want the takeaway to be is to figure out what your student's test score is. Or if you see a course, or if you see a support class, you will see that then um, that student or your student was placed in a, in a course that's appropriate or reflective based on their current reading ability. Um, some scores, some schools provided us a seventh grade spring test, some schools provided us an eighth grade fall, and then just recently we were still getting some test scores. So again, we play student based on, if we have three scores for your student, we will place them on the highest score that we received. Um, any student who receives um, in, in, I'm just gonna go to this last column basically, because it's kind of all over the place. But again, basically if your student scores a thousand or higher, they will be in the grade level um, English class that's appropriate here at Menlo Atherton. If your student scores a little bit low, but not super low, then they'll again, they'll be in the grade level English class with an additional English support class. Students who are reading below this area with the 879, um, but still above a 600, we have a course, we refer to it as Read 180. It is a little bit more intensive and provides students um, some more um, support and with the comprehension. So usually a student in this level is reading at a sixth grade level. And so definitely not quite ready for ninth grade instruction. Um, so again, we, they are in two classes and they get the extra support there. And then every now and then we do have students who are significantly reading below the, what we would like them to be. And then that class is called Intervention ELA or System Reading Score. And that is for students really about reading about fourth grade or below. Math is a little bit easier in, in the sense of finding out what class your student will be in. So basically we have asked your middle school, your children's middle school, what course are these students currently in? And then based on that, we will place them in the appropriate course, the, the sequential course. Um, so if your student is in a regular math class, regular, so some call it middle school math, eighth grade math, um, different levels, but it's not algebra. They will start in algebra one here at MA. If they're in a year long high school um, algebra class, right? It must be a high school level course, then they'll be eligible for geometry. I know one of our middle schools offers algebra one middle school and algebra one high school. And sometimes that is confusing for our families. So really we wanna make sure that your student is in the high school class if your goal is to have your student be in the geometry course. Um, and then again, right, we can just, again, I usually we don't have students in algebra two or higher. Um, so most of our freshmen who are accelerated um, at this point is, is pre-calculus. And I don't mean that most of them go into pre-calculus. It's a very few that actually start ninth grade in pre-calculus. Um, required courses. So again, I know that many of you would think like, well, what are the standard courses that all ninth graders take? And here we are. So the top three are automatically placed, right? Regardless of what your ability is, regardless of what middle school you have come from, your students will spend um, their first quarter in life skills. And then the, the remaining three quarters in a course that we call ethnic studies. This is again for all ninth graders. Everyone will be in biology and all students will be in physical education. So there's nothing you need to neglect in regards to the, these three subject areas. The fourth class again is English. So again, before referring back to the, the placement chart, we will then look at your student's um, Lexile score or reading ability and place them accordingly. You will not have to pick anything there because you will see that the course has already been selected for you. Math class will be the same thing based on the information that your middle school has shared with us, we will place your student accordingly in that class. The sixth class is where you or your student can decide, okay, now I get to pick an elective. And here's a really brief um, list of the electives and I'll go into more options as to what are those other electives. But again, all students must be in six classes and that's true for ninth, 10th and 11th graders. So as you prepare for your high school journey, just know that in ninth, 10th and 11th grade, your student will be in six classes here at Menlo Atherton. 
Um, again, just to review the three mandatory classes that you don't have to do anything. There is no advanced level. It is grade specific for all ninth graders. Um, and I guess going in a little bit more about the ninth grade English courses, right? There's the intervention ELA, again, for students who um, are scoring a little lower and maybe need additional support in their reading comprehension so that they can access the curriculum and some of the other courses and definitely improve their reading comprehension. Um, that is a two periods or two, two periods of that. So a student will be in two classes. It's important to note that that class is not considered college prep. And in the ninth grade year, it's actually not even uh, English class. It's more of a reading support or an, a support language arts support class. But if your student is in this course and they in subsequent years pass a grade level English class, we will retroactively give them credit for that English one class when they were ninth graders. The English one intensive again is for students that are about sixth grade reading ability. Um, they are in two periods as well. So it's the English one intensive course with the support. That course is also not college prep. We want you to know, so that doesn't mean if your student ends up in either one of these courses, it does not mean that they're not eligible to apply to for your university their senior year. It just means you need to work with the school, your child's counselor to figure out a plan to get them on track um, for um, attending a four-year university if that's your and their goal as well. Um, changes for next year. Uh, we have changed our ninth grade standard English one and advanced standing English one class. Um, we are introducing a new course, Multicultural Literature and Voice. Um, students who are a little bit below grade level may have the multicultural course along with the support class. And then again, any student reading at or above grade level will be in a single period of multicultural literature and voice. Again, placement is based on their Lexile score and there is no AS class in English for ninth graders um, next year. And I will now turn it over to Mr. Luscote, who will talk more about the course. Okay, great, thank you. Again, I am Mr. Luscote, uh, the Instructional Vice Principal at MA. I wanna say welcome everybody to Menlo Atherton High School. Um, I have uh, worked in the community for 21 years now and uh, started out as an English teacher at MA. Um, and have been in administration for the past uh, 10 years. Um, I really love MA and I think that uh, your students and you are gonna have a great experience here. So I hope you're excited. Um, what I'm gonna do now is, is just talk a little bit about this new course. And it really is a new course. Uh, we, we really made a conscious effort to go, do away with AS English One and English One as courses as opposed to just putting all students in one or the other, and wanted to create a course that um, felt like we could support students and also provide the same rigor so that we would in an AS English class. Um, and so we've spent a lot of time uh, building a course that um, is guided around three essential questions that works through a variety of texts and units um, that will work on with standards-based grading um, and uh, really rely heavily on very structured guided Socratic seminars as well. Um, before I, I show you some of that detail here, I'm just gonna read one sentence on this slide and it's the uh, kind of midway down. The assessments and activities are designed to challenge students who are reading above grade level and provide scaffolded writing and reading strategies for students who need structured support. That's a challenge. Um, and it really is the, the, the word that describes that is really differentiation. And what our English teachers this year have been doing um, is actually over time, what's happened is our English one teachers and our AS English one teachers have been teaching the same texts. Um, for equity reasons, they felt like, hey, if, if AS one students are gonna read that, English one students are gonna read the same text. So they've been doing that for some time now. Um, what they started doing this year was also assigning, using the same essential questions um, and uh, this year using the same writing assignments. And then this year they even did this, the same unit at the same time, practicing pacing, um, working on um, using that writing assignment in a way that again, provided support, but also challenge and rigor. Uh, so they became, uh, it became very much um, aligned even though we were having two separate courses. And so it just started to make sense 
it, it should be one course uh, where we can create a, a common ninth grade experience uh, for all students um, and, and where we can really engage students in a, in a better sense of community, uh, where we can engage in discussions with each other, support each other, and also challenge. And Ms. Torres, could you actually go back one slide before I go into that one? And so that you know, this, this uh, slide deck will be on our website, um, I think tomorrow. And if you go to this slide, the actual title is a link to some details about the course. So I'm going to ask Ms. Torres to, to link on that real quick. So you will see this information on the website. So if you have questions about the course, this is, a, first of all, a great place to go um, because it's really gone into a course description. I'd like to stop there for a second, Ms. Torres. Uh, you'll see a variety of the texts that students are going to read, House on Mango Street, Enrique's Journey, Kindred. Um, they're going to do a whole science fiction unit around Kindred. Um, Night, the Aila Whistle, um, the Odyssey, and a whole section around mythology, as well as drama. Um, again, this is not done lightly. This is a very well thought out, high quality course. Um, it'll be, these texts will be supplemented by other excerpts, um, poetry, um, and informational texts like TED Talks and articles. And if you go a couple more slides, Ms. Torres, keep going. I wanted to stop there, go back. Back one, I wanna stop there. These are the three kind of topics or essential questions that are gonna guide the class. Um, and I'll just mention a couple of the questions here. Um, I like them, you know, whose truth matters, um, but you know, what makes a person or text reliable? Um, and they're gonna talk a lot about that as they read Enrique's journey and they talk about journalism. Um, the next one is ethics, right? What are we willing to sacrifice for our own happiness? Which values construct our own ethical codes? Um, and then finally, society. What kinds of world? What kind of world do we want to live in? What kind of society do we want to build? Um, I love these questions, and I think they're questions that are are going to be embedded in, in many of the texts that they read, that will drive many of the Socratic conversations that students at the ninth grade level will be having. And if you could go a couple more slides, Ms. Torres. One more, one more, one more, one more. Right there, okay. And then you'll also see on this slide deck, um, the units for semester one and the next slide has units for semester two. So you can really see what's outlined here, personal narrative, science fiction, um, night, um, a, a unit on identity. And then the next slide, um, you'll see Enrique's journey, world mythology, the Odyssey and, and, and the drama unit. So if we can go back to the main slide, Ms. Torres, I just wanted to demonstrate that that will be present on the website. Um, to outline kind of the, the, the substance of the course, um, the essential questions of the course, um, and the, the quality that I, think, that I think the course will represent. Um, it's also, again, as I said, gonna be a standards-based, it's gonna be driven with standards-based grading. Uh, they've what's not linked in that slideshow, but they've developed some really excellent rubrics. Um, rubrics that if you look at what makes excellent, um, kids are going to be pushed, kids are going to be challenged, um, but they're also going to be given the opportunity to, to rewrite, to learn from their mistakes and really rise up to that challenge, as opposed to here's an essay, write it, here's your grade, we're moving on to the next one. It's going to be, here's a writing assignment, let's build the skills, here's what meet the standard is, here's what exceeds the standard is, here's your grade, if you want to exceed it, you have an opportunity to, to continue working on it learning from what you've done and growing. And in that sense, we're really hopeful that we'll be able to push all students. The same process will apply. We've developed an excellent rubric for those Socratic discussions they're gonna use. And then Ms. Torres, can we go back to the, the main slide deck? And then to the next slide. Okay. And then, so just a little bit, I, I've commented on a few of these things, but why are we making this move? Um, and again, what I've already commented on is over the past decade, the coursework assessments rubrics have really grown uh, similar to the, to the point uh, where it just doesn't make sense anymore to have separate courses. Um, we also, we've dealt over the years with, with, an, with stress and the rising stress of our community. It comes out quite a bit uh, in the ninth grade year, in particular in our AS classes. Um, and we've found that we really need to kind of figure out a way to uh, create a, a, a better community that wasn't that one that does provide opportunities for growth, that does challenge students, but also is, is a little bit more um, nurturing, uh, if I can. 
Um, they will all teach the same text. Um, the other concept here we wanted to really uh, kind of battle or fight against. Uh, we feel like when we have two separate courses in English one and AS English one, we start creating mindsets for students uh, that we want to change. And we're really looking to that all of the teachers will be working on developing a growth mindset with kids uh, so that they're not fixed in, hey, I'm an English one student, or they get into an AS one class and, oh, I'm, I'm special. I'm an honor student. Um, this class is going to push all students to feel that way. Um, and the next slide. And I, I probably covered a lot of this, but uh, this class will be challenging. This class will provide the scaffolds and differentiation needed to support students, but also challenge them. Um, there'll be consistent and standards aligned grading practices that emphasize a growth mindset and mastery. It's also what I love about the course is that all of our ninth grade teachers have been working on it. Um, everybody is, is on the same page and there's gonna be a lot of consistency from class to class. And, there's, and in that collaboration, there's also gonna be a lot of support and continued discussion about how do we make the class better? As even for us, all of this is a learning experience. Um, and finally, at the bottom, I just wanna comment, there's an explicit language instruction for academic vocabulary and development. Um, I'm really excited about the course. Um, and I think the teachers have worked hard. I'm really proud of what they produced. I think your students are gonna have an excellent experience. Um, so I think Ms. Torres, I'm gonna pass it back off to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so that was English. So again, that is, that'll be one of the, the six classes your student will be placed in. The next uh, subject matter we wanna talk about is math. And again, math is based on what course your student is currently taking in their middle school. Um, so again, there's algebra one, and I know often, you know, there is no advanced level, it's just algebra one. Um, if your student is currently in algebra one and ready to join geometry, we do have two different courses in geometry, the regular college prep geometry, and then the geometry enriched. And I'll go over the differences in that in just a second. And then again, for students who have been doing geometry in, in eighth grade, they'll move on to AS Algebra 2. And for the small handful of students doing Algebra 2 now, they will go into pre-calculus. And I, you know, I know Mr. Liscote and I are using the word AS, the, the, word, the letters AS, and that stands for advanced standing. So when you see an AS in front of a course, that implies that it is a more, it, it is rigorous, a little bit more rigorous than the average college prep class. Um, but then like for geometry, we use enriched versus AS. So um, just bear with us in our name titles because sometimes they're, um, they're cons consistent and other times they are not. Um, so here's our, our pathway. And again, all the links, when you see a blue different um, color on, on the title, it will take you to a, a link somewhere on our website. And so this one will take you to the math department if you have any questions. And again, here's our pathway. And it's really important for parents to kind of decide. And, and I say parents, but really your student, like, do you love math? Is math a challenge? Are you kind of indifferent, but you're good at it? You love it, but you struggle, right? Really having that honest evaluation of where your student's skills are, regardless of where they're starting and thinking about, okay, if they start in, in algebra, what is the pathway for the four years? If they start in one of the geometry classes, what is their pathway? if they're studying in AS Algebra 2, right? So this is an opportunity. We do have up to multivariable calculus. It is not the expectation that all MA students graduate from our school having completed multivariable calculus, um, right? Again, it is this small group of students that get to that level. And so there is not that expectation. So, but as you decide, and in particular, as you decide as to which geometry class you'd like to take and what the pathway then is for the following years as your student moves through math at MA. And so here's, here's a, a brief um, difference on the two classes, right? Our standard college prep geometry class is composed of students who are in ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. So again, you may have students who were in algebra one in ninth grade and now are in geometry, but your student will be a ninth grader and they can also be in the geometry class. Um, a lot of more guided in instruction. Um, they get practice quizzes and practice tests so that they understand what's going to be on the test so that there's no surprises. Um, usually students who start or are in geometry, their pathway might get to be finite math or statistics by the end of their high school career. Um, students do need to earn a C or better to go into college prep algebra two. If a student who is in geometry, because perhaps you're thinking you don't really know what to expect, 
we're going to place our, our ninth grader in geometry. It does, they are able to go into the AS, the Advanced Standing Algebra 2, but at the end of their ninth grade, they will need to have maintained an A average in the course and have the teacher recommendation to move on into AS Algebra 2. Um, if your student, again, is has strong math skills, really enjoys math, um, our geometry class, enriched class, sorry, is, it, is primarily for ninth graders. We do have some 10th graders, again, who were in that Algebra 1 and did really well and their teacher may have recommended them for geometry enriched. Um, again, they, they go over geometry concepts, engaging at the higher level thinking tasks and problem solving. So there might not be those practice quizzes that a student in regular geometry might get. Um, again, the, the curriculum is more in depth and goes at a faster pace. They probably cover one more chapter than the regular geometry class. And the students leaving this class are prepared for the rigor of advanced standing algebra two. In order to be eligible to go into AS algebra two, the student does need to earn a B or better in geometry enriched. And again, if you go to our MA Bear website and look in the math department, you will find additional information. Um, I know many of you may be thinking, oh, my student is in algebra or is in is in algebra now and we want them to do geometry over the summer or they're in high school, I mean, sorry, middle school math and we want them to do algebra over the summer. Um, again, this link here allows you to go on to the acceleration, um, like what, what the options are. You do not need permission from Menlo Atherton to do that, again. But if you want your, cho your child to accelerate and be in the higher level course in the ninth grade, here are some things that you need to consider, right? You might wanna have them start that class now because of course the, the full year, year long class must be done by the end of July because we need a grade or transcript, some sort of proof that they have completed the prerequisite course for the higher level course. And we need that by August 3rd, right? So again, running up against time. And so sometimes we have parents who are just starting or students are starting the class in the middle of June. And I really don't know if that's enough time for them to complete the course and really be prepared for the next level that they're trying to get into. Another important um, information to note is that they do not get high school credit. They are not high school students when they take that course. Therefore, we will not award them the credit and we will not add it to their transcript. But again, the verification is needed so that we know that they have met the prerequisite to move on to the next course. Um, because what we have is the information that the middle school shared for, with us. Um, so again, now we've gone over the students will be in life skills, um, biology, PE, math, and English. So now they have one course left over to meet the six um, required courses. And that would be some sort of elective. So it would be maybe perhaps pursuing a world language, um, taking one of our visual art, visual performing art class, a career technical education class, or another elective. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, so world language, um, we have four, technically four different languages that we offer. Um, Chinese, it's Mandarin. Again, there's a nice link um, that our uh, Chinese students put together, right? We would love to have more students um, join the program. And so it just, it's really, it's very cute if you have time to watch it. I, I wanna make, I, I would love to show you all these different things about MA, but I also don't wanna keep you here all night. Um, and so again, if, if your student hasn't done a, a world language in their middle school and they're up for trying to do something different, Chinese um, might be a good option for them. Uh, French, Latin, Spanish, and then we have Spanish for native speakers. So we do have a lot of students who come to us who already speak Spanish because that is their native language that they speak in their homes. And then we have um, a growing a growing group of students from one of our feeder schools who has a Spanish immersion program. And so those students often um, will choose to do the native speakers. And again, that is a choice. So you can definitely have the conversation with your students uh, middle school about what might be a better choice. Um, and I'll be honest with you, we have students who exit the immersion program from Hillview and some prefer to be the non-native and some prefer the native they, for the most part, are very successful in whichever they choose to do. It's really just a comfort level. Um, sometimes if they do go into the higher level classes, they could be a little bit more intimidated because they are in a class of the juniors and seniors. And so as a ninth grader who's maybe just turned 14, 
It can be a little scary when they walk into level four um, or AP for the Spanish. Um, but uh, again, for the most part, our students that have come from the immersion program have been very successful in either the non-native or the native course um, pathway. Visual performing arts. So we have a lot more than just what's listed here, but these are the visual arts that are available to freshmen. Right, and so drawing and painting or ceramics, we have level one and level two. I know some of the middle schools have some sort of art programs. And so if your student was in an art class in seventh or eighth grade, they might be ready to go on to the level two. And so then you'll have the opportunity to select um, level two for those two courses. Um, and then we have stagecraft, guitar, choir, drama, orchestra, jazz, and two different jazz. Um, and again, the, they're highlighted in yellow because you may have heard that, well, wait a minute, you said that kids could only take six classes, but my neighbor's son is in seven classes. How did that happen? How come he got to be in seven classes? And here's why, because you're, the student probably chose a world language and then is in one of these courses that is in highlight, right? And these are the courses that we allow students to pick as a seventh class. Um, and like the music program, we wanna make sure, oftentimes if students had to make a choice, they may not be able to pursue what they really love, music, for example. So in these situations, we want to make sure that they're, they're pursuing maybe a world language and then one of the other courses that is of interest to them. Um, and then again, for the, the orchestra band and jazz band, there are auditions required. Um, Mr. Curris often works with the music programs at your middle schools, and then he will provide information on how auditions will be done especially now um, during COVID. I'm not sure how he did it last year to be quite honest, but he figured it out. And I'm sure that he will be able to do that again this year. Uh, our technical education classes, there's only, again, we have many, many, many career tech ed classes, but for freshmen, these are the three that are available to them. Um, the digital animation, modeling and animation. So it is a, it's a really fun class. And um, if we have time, I have a video that will show a lot of these um, uh, electives for students to pick from, digital filmmaking, and then the introduction to program, programming mobile apps. Again, either any one of these classes, they're not highlighted, but any one of the CTE classes that your student might be interested in taking is also eligible to take as a seventh class. Now they don't have to, they may choose to not do a world language and choose to do a CTE. Instead, um, but sometimes students like to get started on the world language and they may want to do an elective as well. And so again, there's very specific courses that allow a student to take seven. Um, some of the other options is leadership. Um, Mr. Amoroso is our um, leadership teacher and um, activities director on, at Menlo Atherton. I know that he, if your school has a leadership program, he does communicate with the teachers and um, tries to recruit some of the eighth graders that have really been leaders on their campus so that they can uh, continue to do that here at MA if you're interested. But you can definitely send him uh, an email and find out more about the leadership program. Um, and again, when you, I'm gonna show you how you can pick, pick the classes, but that will be an option for you as well. Um, MA offers a course called, we call it AVID, but it stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. And again, the link is very comprehensive. It shares a lot of information on if you think, oh, does my student qualify? Is that something that we would, we would want our student in? And so this is often a program for the middle of the road kid, right? The student who has anywhere between a 2.0 and a 3.5 GPA, um, right? And there could be other factors. A lot of our students in the AVID program, um, parents did not go on to college, but their parents want to want them to go to college. The student wants to go to college, but perhaps they haven't been in an environment um, that kind of supports that for whatever reason, right? Like, I don't know how to go to college, but I want my child to go. How can I get them help? AVID is a great option for them. Um, sometimes uh, we have a, a small community and you probably know it better than I do. You live, you live around here. Um, many of our parents come from other countries, so they may be educated in their own country, but they don't understand the American system and ACs and what does that mean and SATs, I don't understand this. And so again, sometimes this might be a good fit for those students as well. Um, and again, if you, if you have more questions and you wanted to learn a little bit more about the AVID program, the link is live. 
and um, there's a lot of good information about deciding whether this is a good program for your student or not. If you decide, yes, I wanna learn more about AVID, I want my student to be a part of this program, um, the application is, is linked here, and then you can fill out the application and then send it to the appropriate person. Again, all the contact information is in this link. And again, either one of these classes does allow your student, student to take it as a seventh class. Um, so again, going over like what, how many, who gets to have seven classes? Students in a support program. So again, sometimes I mentioned early on that a student who's not reading at grade level will have an English class plus a support class. So that might be that student's seventh class. Class or students who are in special education and have an IEP, they may also be eligible for a study skills class. So that might be their seventh class. Um, again, the different performing arts or the career technical ed, leadership or avid are all courses or programs that would qualify a student to take a seventh class. Um, we could talk a little bit more about students in special education or who have an IEP. At MA, uh, I know at many of the middle schools, they either have like a resource class or a pullout program where students with special education needs may be pulled out or have a group. And at MA, we call it a study skills class. Um, as your student is getting ready to transition to high school, uh, your middle school is organizing appointments now with dates and times that work for you and their staff, your middle school staff, as well as an MA staff. And they will, there will be a transition meeting sometime this spring. So if you haven't heard from your middle school reps, you can either contact um, the person in charge of special education on your site. Um, perhaps again, if your student's in the resource class, speaking to the teacher in that program. Um, but I know that our department chair is working with, the, with all of our feeder schools to set up those meetings. Um, and again, just to reiterate, you know, sometimes do, do students with IEPs take different classes? Nope. They take regular English, life skills, biology, PE, math, a study skills class, and if they want to, they are able to take an elective as well. So a lot of our students with IEPs do take seven classes. Um, a little bit different from an IEP, but still um, getting additional support for your students or students with a 504 accommodation plan. So if your student currently has a 504 at the middle school, they continue to be eligible as they transition to high school. Um, Ms. Jen Heddle is our, um, she wears many hats. One of those is 504 uh, coordinator. Uh, and so she is already taking appointments. So if you, you know, get home and you remember, what's her name, Jen Heddle, you can send her an email and she again is starting to meet with parents. One thing it's important to know about 504 is often um, and this may have happened if your student had um, a 504 in say elementary, and then they moved to middle school. But what happens in an elementary is different from middle school. And so the same is true for high school. The 504 plan that worked in middle school may not necessarily work at high school. So often we, we kind of look at what services your student was receiving and then um, modify that to be appropriate for high school. Um, this year has been a challenge, again, uh, because of COVID and being in distance learning. Um, so we, we, the accommodations have been a little bit different than they've been in traditional years, but um, again, the students still continue to be eligible. And Ms. Heddle will work with you. If you don't reach out to her, she will definitely reach out to you by August and let you know what she recommends for your student. Um, okay, so. We wanna do a quick check-in. Some of you may have been posting questions in the, in the Q&A in the chat. And so I'm gonna allow my, my team here to either ask me a question that maybe has come up repeatedly or if we need to just move on. So um, Mr. Kubo, Ms. Sue. Yes, thank you, Ms. Torres. So yes, we have had a lot of questions coming our way and we love them. So parents, feel free to check out the Q&A section if you haven't already, and you can review some questions we have already answered publicly. And um, we do have two questions that we would like to read out loud for everyone to hear. Um, the first one is regarding world language. So if a student is currently taking a high school level world language class and they're earning at B or better, they should sign up for the next level as their elective. And um, if 
they know a language, they're not currently taking it and will need a placement test. For example, for French, for Mandarin, you will see the teacher's contact info once you have the registration information. You'll see it on the website and you'll know who to contact and, um, and how to contact them. And then you'll get in touch and you can do the placement there. We'll get the result and then we'll do the, um, the placement for the students later on. So that's the first question. And then the second question we'll have Mr. Lusko answer for us regarding how school uh, may be um, operating in the fall. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Yu. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough one to answer because uh, I don't think we really know, just to be frank about it. Um, and things change fast. Um, if you would have asked me a month and a half ago, I don't know that I would have thought we were going to start in person um, in April, which we are. Um, and so right now we don't know. The county office, San Mateo County office is at the moment, right, recommending that schools prepare for 50% on campus and 50% at home in, in a hybrid model. Um, but that can change. Uh, and so I just, we will start with that uh, recommendation, start planning, uh, but we'll be ready to move into full in-person um, as soon as we can. Okay. So I think we, those were the two biggest questions that we saw coming through. So I will move on with our presentation here. Um, so how do you do this? How are you going to select this these courses and, and what is Infinite Campus? So again, Infinite Campus is our student system where we um, have student schedules, attendance and personal information. Um, and so you'll be able to access that information. Here's my big red sign, be on the lookout starting again, the district will be sending this information out on March 15th and it will have your students password and um, username on how to log into Infinite Campus and it'll have instructions on how to get to the system. Um, but I will show you, just kind of give you a preview of what that might look like. Um, so when you log in, again, it'll tell you where to log in. And um, you'll see when you log in, you're, it's, it's, a, it's this website for our entire district. So you wanna make sure you pick the correct high school that your child will be attending. Obviously you're here with us this evening. So it's an Menlo Atherton High School, MA. Again, or you click here. Again, the links here are live so that when you get, if when we will be sharing this presentation with you. So again, you'll be able to click on the links here to get to this website in case you didn't, you don't get the password or you forget and you need a little tutorial on how to navigate this. Um, again, when you get there, you're gonna see this page and it has our course catalog. You're gonna see all the courses that we have to offer. It's not just the courses that freshmen are eligible to take. Um, but again, you can look at those, get a little bit course description on, on what students will be learning in, in those different courses. Uh, here is the courses that you are eligible. So the question about world language, we don't have French here, but you can definitely reach out to Salvadora Canoje. She is our world language department chair. So if you have a question about where your um, Spanish emergent students should join, if your student speaks another language, but you're not really sure where should you place them, again, she will either, if it's related to Spanish, she'll be able to help you. If it's a French question, she'll connect you with the French teacher. If you wanna know more about Chinese, then here's the contact for our Chinese teacher. Um, and then again, here's the information. Here's Mr. Curris's um, email information. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about that, um, Avid, our contact information is Ms. Shepard and her email is here. Again, Mr. Amoroso. So again, if you reference this, you're gonna have access to this. You'll be able to see, um, again, the courses that are available to your freshmen and how to contact a person if you have questions specifically about courses. When you log in, this is, you're gonna click on, let me go back here. When you click on this link right here, Infinite Campus, it's gonna take you to the student portal. And here's where you're gonna use your student's username and password. If you have questions specifically, again, everybody will see this, Menlo Atherton. We have a guidance information specialist who support the counseling office and the two individuals that will be here to support you if you have any questions on navigating the system is Lorenzo Gomez or Wendy Mosqueda. Um, and if, yeah, so they, they're, and it is by your alphabet. So again, your student's last name, not the parent's last name, if it's different. 
So they'll say, oh, what's your student's last name? And then again, or when you call or leave a message, both of them do work on campus on different days. So again, you can call the school's member, leave a message for them on their, on their office um, inbox, or you can send them an email directly and they will reach out to you. Um, so here's just a, a small sample. When you log in, this is what you're going to see. You're gonna see that your five classes have already been selected for your students. So of the six, five have already been selected. It'll say required. So again, an example, the student is going into geometry, life skills, biology, PE, and our new English class, multicultural literature and voice. Um, so then again, we wanna to get to six out of six up here. And so here again, here's a sample. We're gonna say that this student is in geometry. We, that's where we have placed him, but the parent is saying, you know, I really want them to, put, to go into geometry enriched. And they have selected that as an alternate um, and they have also selected digital filmmaking as an alternate and they pick Chinese as a request. So really what, when I see this and I'm gonna, all the counselors will be reviewing this information. I'm gonna review this and go, okay, I'm gonna move this student into Chinese for sure as a required class. I see that the family has selected geometry enriched. I will remove geometry. You cannot, I have to do that. I will remove geometry enriched. I mean, sorry, geometry and add geometry enriched. And because I know that digital filmmaking is a seventh, is a, one of the courses that allows a student to be in a seventh class, I'm also going to put that in there. And, and then um, the student would end up being, being able, it'll show seven classes for the student, right? If, for example, you pick another alternative like ceramics, but you pick Chinese and then ceramics, I will not add your student to ceramics because it is not a course that makes them eligible to take seven classes. Okay, so again, um, your student may decide to postpone taking a world language and it may be just digital filmmaking and, and ceramics as an alternative. Um, and again, so I will be able to interpret some of this information just because I know how, how that works. Um, but this is at the end when you're done, it should show 100% complete, six out of six, and then what your requests and alternates. Again, the first five classes I've already chosen for you. Um, on that website, the original one that you get into, there is a, again, a, a power a slide presentation that tells you how to go through it. Um, and there's more information on that. So again, we want to encourage you to, to, you can start, again, once you get my PowerPoint, you can begin to kind of go through this um, briefly. I'm looking at the time, I don't want to go into too longer. But again, this link is live and it is basically the website or the, the presentation for how to navigate this and how do you go about adding classes for your students. Um, we do have a, an elective video and I'm gonna see how many more other, if we have time, I will show it. And again, this is specifically for ninth graders, except that there are two classes that are in the video that are not available to freshmen. And quite honestly, we removed Woods from freshmen um, as a choice. Uh, not because we're in distance learning, but because it, it is a very popular course here at MA. And for the last two to three years, we've had it for freshmen to pick, but we've been oversubscribed. And then we always end up putting a student, the freshman in a, their second or third choice. So this year we made the decision about not allowing freshmen to pick that class because our own current students really enjoy the program. And so that just means that in the future years, your student can decide to take that class. Um, and then the same thing for digital community. Next steps, right? So now what do you do? Okay, now you have all this information. What do you do now? So again, coming up, um, so I'm sorry, I went up, I went too far. The next step is you're gonna get that information. Sorry, this is, I'm just looking at my PowerPoint, I apologize. The next step is really, you're gonna pick your classes. And now it's April 1st, April 2nd, and you're like, how do I know that the counselor got the right information? What if I still have questions? So you're gonna have two choices to do. I'm gonna jump ahead here a little bit. If you have questions about what I just said, right? Here are the counselors, here are the people that you wanna contact, right? Again, your child has a 504, contact Ms. Kettle. Your child has an IEP, but your middle school hasn't told you what to do. How do you ensure that your students' needs are gonna be met? You can contact Ms. Chavez. Um, you're just, you never got the user name or the password. How do you get that? You would contact either Lorenzo Gomez or Wendy Mosqueda. I wanna talk about classes for my student. I'm not really sure. This is our goal. This is our pathway. My friend told me this, whatever the case may be. 
currently our caseload for ninth graders. It may change for next year, but right now, if you know, depend on your student's last name, if you wanted to have a, a quick um, email exchange with your with the student's counselor, you can send us an email. Um, if you wanted to say, well, can we do a, a chat like on the phone or um, do a Zoom call, we will start doing those after, after April 5th. Don't worry, we know that March 31st is the deadline. We can still make changes on our end. We just want parents to start making decisions and then we as counselors again have the ability to make changes. So again, if you wanted to do a Zoom uh, communication with a counselor, you would just go ahead and email the appropriate counselor and then we can help you with that. Um, but going back to some other things here, if you feel confident that you did everything correctly, you don't really have any questions, perfect. I, early on in the presentation, I talked about the online information update and that will, you'll get information and it'll be the same username and passwords. So you don't have to do anything great different. You'll go onto Infinite Campus. Again, this is your opportunity to provide us any medical information that we need to know about your freshmen, um, emergency contacts, um, things of that nature. Uh, and then you'll be able to confirm the courses. So you will see definitely at that point when you complete that online registration, online update information. And at the end, it'll say, here are the courses that we have your students um, enrolled in for next year. Um, and you can either confirm, yes, this is correct or no. And then it'll allow you to make um, any requests. And then again, the counselors will be following up with families who have questions about what they're, what they're seeing as a confirmation classes. Um, reading homework for your students. So Mr. Lusco did a great job at explaining our new course. There is some homework. Again, this is a live link um, and it tells, I think students get to pick which book they want to do. And then based on what they choose to read, then they'll have some um, journaling to do and some questions and thoughtful processing of their assignment that they did for the summer. They don't have to do it now. They can definitely start in the summer. Um, right, they just want to finish eighth grade successfully, but just knowing that there is summer reading for all ninth graders. Um, if your student is interested in athletics, I know it seems kind of weird to be talking about athletics when we're in a pandemic, but we are starting sports here at MA. I don't know what sports will look like in the fall, if it will be something um, similar to this year or we'll have more of a traditional year. But if your student is interested in learning more about that on our general MA website, again, the links are live, you can find out more about, and, and the information there right now is based on this current year. It usually will get updated when we get closer to the end of the school year. But again, feel free to start navigating, looking for more information. We have two athletic directors, their information is also there. Um, again, the, the second website is more about, well, what sports does MA offer? We have lots of sports at MA. Um, and then the calendar and some highlights and some great things that our athletes are doing at Mineral Appleton. Um, and I think that might be it. So we have, we're almost at, at a full hour here. Ms. Sue or Mr. Kubo, do we have any additional questions that I might be able to answer right now? Um, maybe Mr. Lusku, you could speak to what an IEP is and what a 504 is really briefly, or Ms. Torres, if you'd like to address that as well. Sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <clears throat> um, both both are, are plans that are, are meant to help provide support uh, to students that have a range of disabilities. And, and really there's, a, there's such a range of disabilities and there's a range of, of supports that we have available. Um, so an IEP stands for an individual education plan. Um, and you there's a very variety of assessments um, that, that go into qualifying for an individual education plan. And really students who qualify for that really have a, a higher level of support. Um, and that could just simply mean a, a study skills class and a case manager, but it might also mean modifying uh, work that's done in a course, um, doing half the homework problems, for example. Uh, something that, that will help the student access the content. Whereas a 504 plan, um, is less involved and really there's kind of minor tweaks that we can do that can help a student access the content 
um, and demonstrate their knowledge. So a common 504 accommodation is, you know, extra time on tests and quizzes or um, testing in a small setting, something like that. So we're not really, there's not really, you know, heavy involvement into changing a course or, or providing kind of day-to-day -day support. Um, but there are some accommodations we can do with the 504 plan that can help some students um, feel more successful, so. Thank you, excellent. Another question that we have is about um, the username and password situation. How will parents and families get access to that information? Again, um, the district will be sending out information by mail um, on, on Monday, the 15th. And because the district is in Redwood City, we anticipate that families will be able to get that information by the 17th, when is when the window will open. So again, if, if it's like the 18th and you haven't received it, then you would want to call um, Wendy or Lorenzo here in the guidance office, and then they would be able to find out what that username or password is. Yeah, so again, that's why I'm putting it out. Like, look out in your mail, look for it. Um, and then if you don't get it, then the contact would be contact you on there. Um, and if you've forgotten the names, just call MA and say, I need to speak to someone in the counseling office and we'll be able to help you. Any more questions? I think we have one more. Okay. Um, we're, asked, we're getting questions about students um, being able to retake placement tests. Can you speak more to that? Um, it's not, we're, MA is not set up to give students testing, right? So um, we, all the testing that will be done for students who are not from our feeder schools, our feeder elementary or middle schools will be done by the district office. So again, at this point, I do not believe that the district has the capacity to retest students. It's not something that we um, normally do as well. Um, it's, you know, and again, it depends on if, if the student scored really low. Again, this is something that having that conversation with the counselor to say, whatever the situation may have been, you know, they were really sick, but we were told it was super important. And again, um, we do have to go by those test scores, but there are some other avenues that a parent can explore. And so again, reaching out to their assigned counselor would probably be the best step for that particular situation. That's all we have for now, but we'll definitely have more later. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, we're pretty much done with the presentation. So I, I can, I'm happy to, uh, for those of you who, who would like to continue and watch, I'm gonna play our video of electives. Um, and those of you who are have plenty and have lots to think about in the next few days until you get your username and your password and start um, selecting electives for your students. Thank you so much for being with us tonight again. This presentation was recorded, so we'll have that up on our website in the next couple of days, as well as this uh, slide presentation. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to um, the guidance office um, at MA. We have no sound. Sorry, everyone. I just I was just asking if you can hear, and apparently you cannot hear the presentation. 
uh, or the video. So let me, it's one of those things I don't know how to do. So give me a quick second to figure it out. There it is. Okay, so I think we'll start all over again. often do you go to the movies or binge a show on Netflix? Why not learn to make your own films and videos? <gasps> you can make the next Ragnarok, La La Land, or Stranger Things, and it all starts here in digital filmmaking. In our digital filmmaking class, you will learn basic and advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere and After Effects. You will learn what it takes to get that perfect footage. Have fun, explore a fantastic career field, and step up your film game in digital filmmaking. Imagine being able to work on hands-on projects all the time. If so, woodworking is for you. Starting with one, all woodworking courses are all year long and satisfy the C2 requirement for your graduation. Woods 1, 2, and 3 are hands-on project-based classes in machine tool woodworking. Starting with Woods 1, no experience is necessary. Woods 1, 2, and 3 are useful to any student interested in engineering, construction, developing practical common sense, or pursuing a lifelong hobby. It's fun to make stuff. Have you ever wanted to learn how to animate 3D characters in video games and movies? Have you ever wanted to learn how to make your own 3D characters, environments, and objects? Well then sign up for 3D Computer Animation. We use Autodesk Maya, the same 3D animation software used to create almost all video games and movies. College credit is also offered, along with all the great fun you'll be having. So if you love video games and want to learn 3D animation, then this is the class for you. Don't just play on your phone, learn to program it. This quote by President Barack Obama explains why you might enjoy learning how to make apps that you can use on your phone or send to a friend. Using code.org's app lab technology, we learn to make apps based in JavaScript. Come and make games, computer art, and more. Ever want to know what it takes to produce live broadcast? There's a lot more to MA today than just reading announcements. Gain first-hand experience with state-of-the-art equipment and software. Learn how to live stream and produce segments on sports and theater events. Become the face of Menlo Attitude and keep your school informed. It's a ton of fun. Take digital communications and video streaming today. Painting 1 is a beginning level art class for students with little or no previous art experience. In this class, you learn how to draw and paint, so if you always say, I can't draw, well, this is the class for you. If you like graffiti, graphic novels, realistic drawings, or anything in between, Drawing and Painting 1 will help you to build and develop your skills. The basics of two-dimensional art are the focus of the class as we learn how to use a variety of drawing and painting mediums and techniques. You'll learn how to create realistic, expressive, and stylistic artworks while developing problem-solving skills that can be applied to your academic classes. So sign up for drawing and painting one. Want to express your passion for music? Well, you can be a part of MA's award-winning jazz band. Perform at a professional level and travel around the nation with a talented ensemble. Audition with one to two years playing experience and learn music theory, technique, and improv skills. Email Ken Curris at kcurris at seq.org to find out how you can pursue your music career. Join jazz band today. Love to be in the spotlight, want to make people laugh, or just want to improve your public speaking skills? Then enroll in drama next year. MA offers four levels of drama courses which all focus on the study and production of different theoretical styles. Drama 1 students study beginning acting techniques, theater history, improv comedy, and what it takes to make theater happen in the real world. Drama is also a great place to improve your public speaking skills. Students in drama perform multiple classic and original pieces over the semester. Yeah. So if you've dreamed of winning that Emmy or Oscar or Tony, then drama is a place for you. Be 
part of ME's award-winning concert band. If you love to play an instrument and have one year or more of playing experience, this is a group for you. Play your instrument every day, give concerts, play at school events such as football games, and travel to music festivals. It's all here for musicians of all backgrounds. Contact Kent Curris at kcurris at seq.org and begin your MA music adventure. Ceramics 1 is an introductory art course where students learn the basics of hand building and the fundamentals of ceramic design and construction. Students are introduced to ceramic artwork and are exposed to throwing clay on the wheel with the amazing opportunity to paint and decorate their art later on. By creating functional and sculptural pieces, students are immersed into cultural and artistic traditions of clay work. Students who take ceramics are those who prefer concentration and three-dimensional creativity with clay. If you enjoy tapping into your creativity and self-expression through clay projects, then ceramic this is the class for you. If you want to explore your voice's capability or just love singing, choir is the class for you. If you're an aspiring singer or rapper, you will study music fundamentals, choir literature, and performing skills. You'll be singing in a wide range of songs, from pop to classic to acapella music. Figure out if you're a soprano or bass singer. Earn your VPA credits by taking choir you'll have an opportunity to participate in the winter, spring, and graduation concerts. Ever wonder how your favorite plays and musicals are put together? Then Stagecraft is the elective for you. You get this golden opportunity to bring theater to life and learn the art behind theater's big hits. Students in Stagecraft study sets, costumes, makeup, and lighting design. Students will put the skills they learn to the test by setting the stage for everything in the PAC. Take this chance to earn VPA credits and join StageCraft today. Join MA's award-winning full orchestra to become part of a powerful musical group. This audition-only ensemble will allow you to perform at a high level and travel to prestigious music festivals around the country. Contact Kent Curris at kcurris at seq.org to pursue your MA orchestral dreams. Leadership is an elective where students creatively learn and plan school events like rallies, dances, lunch events, and more. Students get the opportunity to give back to the community in a more fun and positive way like canned food drives, trick-or-treat street, and other service events. They can even come up with their own ideas that they're passionate about. Leadership give the example by battling school segregation and make everyone feel welcome in the school. AVID's mission is to close the achievement gap by preparing all students for college readiness and success in a global society. AVID students have the potential to attend a four-year college or university. Typically, they will be the first in their families to attend college and many are from low income or minority families. For one class period each day, they learn organizational and study skills, work on critical thinking and asking probing questions, get academic help from peers and college tutors, and participate in enrichment and motivational activities that make college seem attainable. a scholar of the past and present, Latin will show you the intricacies of the greatest ancient empire in history. Improve your grammar, deepen your English vocabulary, and get to know the foundation of all Western languages and literature. Get a head start in the humanities, and at the end of the year, reward yourself with a super fun trip to the JCL convention. Veni Vidi Vici. Do you want to find out what the teenagers are doing and thinking about in another part of the world? Do you want to join 1.2 billion people in speaking the most used language in the world? Do you want to learn more about one of the oldest existing civilizations? If yes, try the Mandarin classes. Mandarin classes have a strong emphasis on speaking and comprehension. Through rhymes, tongue twisters, songs, poems, movement, games, role playing, and hands on activities, learn it will bring you a completely new perspective about the world. Come join us. Be immersed in the French culture as soon as you enter the classroom. 
We will enjoy many creative and fun projects like learning to rap in French, as well as enjoying various aspects of French cuisine like crepes. You don't need to have taken French before. Learning French will bring out the best in you and allow you to thrive. J'aime les Français. Hablemos Espanol? Want to learn how to speak Spanish or explore Latin culture? Our Spanish program offers courses for native and non-native speakers at any level, from beginner to AP. Have conversations, write, and do many cultural exploratory projects in MA's Spanish program. Are we wrapped up, Ms. Torres? I think that's it, right? I just want to thank everybody for coming done. today. I see we still have some participants. I don't know if you have any more questions for us. Or um, thank you again for being with us this evening. Again, lots of information for you to take home and process. Um, feel free to reach out to us again. You can find all this information hopefully in the next couple of days on our website as well. Thank you.